Hi, Coach. Um, what was Iowa State able to do early to kind of get your guys a little bit off kilter to get that early lead? I don't know if it was much Iowa State. It was on us. You guys are obviously known for playing a pretty physical brand of basketball, and that seemed to be the whole game for each team. Do you feel like that kind of leaned one way or the other by the end of the contest in terms of one team kind of coming out on top on that battle? Well, one team shot 22 free throws, and the other team uh, shot 12. So, Coach, what were your impressions on the atmosphere tonight? Nothing changed. time and I think what 16 or 17 at halftime and uh, Jamal Tinsley couldn't hit the floor if he fell out of the boat from the three point line made six threes second half I'm exaggerating on both counts probably and, um, uh, Larry was the coach and I've always had great admiration for the fans here You had 12 turnovers in the first half. It was going too fast for them, or? Um, no. No. We just, um, we just kind of keep running the ball. Milan, can you walk us through that uh, that last jumper? Yeah, I mean, we work on that every day in practice, that last second shot. Um, obviously, the fadeaway, I do a lot, so it just, it's comfortable. Um, smaller defender on me, they came with a double, but shot right over the smaller defender, and it was just, it's a shot I work on every day, so I'm comfortable with it. Damon, what did you see on that possession from your vantage point? Uh, the play we, we had design kind of broke down, but once it got into Lowe's hands, uh, in that in that spot, I've seen him hit shots like that so many times in practice and also in game. So uh, when that went up, I just had a feeling it was going in, and uh, it was a great shot by Lowe's. What was what was the play, and how did you guys adapt to work, get it to where it went? Yeah, I was supposed to catch it out the inbounds and uh, get a go screen uh, to get to the hoop, uh, but they denied me. So um, I think Keyshawn was able to get it to, to Milan, and uh, he was able to make a play. Tamer, what kind of message did you guys send tonight, not only to the Big 12, but to the college basketball nation? We're just a, we're a, we're a great team, uh, not to doubt us. Uh, we're, we're a young team. We're learning every game, but um, we're going to come out and, and fight every game, no matter who we're playing, no matter where we're playing. Um, just don't doubt us. What was it about the start of the game that enabled you guys to, to, to have such a whatever it was, lead? I don't know what the lead was. But. Yeah, we want to be the team throwing the first punches. Uh, not being on our heels, putting the other team on their heels, and um, making them take a step back. Uh, and that's what we did the, in the first half. We came out to a large lead. 
uh, I don't think they were expecting that, and that, that helped us to uh, just grow momentum throughout the whole game. Milan, the, the second half, that was, that was the first basket you made in the second half. What, what were they doing to you? In order, maybe you weren't even looking for your shot. I don't know. You were looking for your teammates. I don't know. Yeah, they were just staying uh, closer to me on the three-point line, so not letting me get any clean looks. Um, I mean, they did a good job guarding me. I was struggling in the second half there. Um, obviously, that was the only bucket I made in the second half, so credit to them. They did a good job. So, yeah. For both you guys, it seemed like your defensive intensity took a step up from the beginning to the end of the game, uh, whistle to whistle. A, do you agree with that, and just what went into that playing, you know, obviously against a team that ends with having defensive role? Yeah, I think our, our whole team knows that you win games with defense, uh, especially down the last couple minutes of the game. It's going to be who gets more stops. Uh, so that's really what we were focused on in that second half and when it came down to crunch time. and. Um, just get stops and get stops, get stops, and the offense is going to um, create its own. Yeah, like you said, I mean, we take pride in defense every day. Um, if our <laughs> offense, we're not scoring, I mean, just shut the other team down so they're not scoring either. It's that simple. And then just rebounding, too, because they're, they're one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Um, so we had to make sure we re rebounded well. And Milan, sorry to revisit the fadeaway, but it feels like a lot of times guys turn in towards the court. You, they didn't give you that option turning to the baseline. Was that? You practice those just as often, so you felt just as comfortable turning it that way? Yeah, I feel comfortable turning anywhere, really. <laughs> Milan, you talked about that being your only made shot of the second half up until that point before the free throws. For you to be a freshman and have the coaching staff drop a play for you to get that shot and get that look in a moment like that, what's that kind of mean to you as a, as a player? I mean, it means, it means a lot, <coughs> just the trust they have in me um, to go get a bucket there. Uh, I mean, not to be cocky, but big time players make big time shots. So, what was the process? Do you think of kind of going about and getting the coaching staff to have the trust and belief in you to make those kind of shots? Uh, I think they just see it every day, and either the individual workouts, practice. Um, they know I shoot at a high clip, so they just let me do it, and that's kind of one of my patent moves, I guess. Damon, how important was the free throw line for you guys tonight, offensively? It was super important. It was a really physical game uh, on both sides. There were a lot of fouls called and a lot of fouls not called. So it was just being aggressive on the offensive side, trying to get to the line. Uh, I was not happy with my free throw shooting in the first half. Uh, uh, I was able to, I think, go four for four in the second half. So um, just focusing when you get to the line, uh, knowing that th those are big shots for our team. And um, I knew at the end I wanted to get, get the ball to him because uh, he was going to knock him down. Obviously, it's huge, but what did it feel like on the court? I guess I'll take. Uh, it, was, it felt amazing just playing against top teams in the country um, every given night in the Big 12, and uh, especially the, the number two team being, being Houston. Uh, we knew that we were going to come out and just give it our all. Uh, we knew that the fans would be on our side, even though there was a, a big winter, winter storm with all the snow and stuff. They still showed out, and they were loud. Uh, I think they helped us a lot and brought a lot of energy to us. It was it was up there, uh, especially for the amount of people um, that were were there tonight. Um, it was it was definitely in, in one of my top my top games. I mean, I thought it was really loud, one of the <laughs> loudest places I've ever played in. Uh, I mean, it means a lot. Um, I mean, dreaming about it, I mean, that's cool. But actually having it happen, I mean, that's surreal. Um, versus the number two team in the country. So, I mean, uh, that's, it's an amazing feeling.